Greetings, YouTube. I created a cheap booth for my voiceover hobby, and I'm happy to say that it was a success. You're here to judge that, and if you like what you hear, you can build one as well. So, in this video, I'll first compare straight away a before and after take, show what I've actually done, explain why it works, and how you can build one yourself. Small note number one, use headphones for this. Small note number two, regarding the following clip, I said the lines out loud to get the room inside the microphone. Okay, here we go. Hey, YouTube! This is a test! Hey, YouTube! This is a test! I guarantee you I did not do anything to the microphone, the preamp, nor the recording afterwards. This is all raw. But did you hear that? When I said the stuff here, I have an echo? Hey, YouTube! A test! And when I did it again in the booth, the echo is rather faint? Hey, YouTube! A test! Can you hear it? Hey, YouTube! Hey, YouTube! Hey, YouTube! Hey, YouTube! Okay, so what did I actually build? This is my blanket hanging around me on a PVC ring attached to four closet lines, all stringed up in a spring snap inserted into a small eyelet in the ceiling. That's it. Plain and simple. And cheap. This blanket booth serves two purposes. The first you already heard, where the second is the possibility to take it down and stash it away so you still have a presentable room. Now, why does it work at all? I used a homemade noise shield for a good year which did wonders when I had to raise my voice, but it didn't eliminate the echoes. Most people who want this contraption recall voices that must be clear for radio, TV shows, audiobooks, you name it. And most of these people have condenser microphones, which have a polar pattern similar to the Blue Mic Snowball or the Rode NT1. Common for both of them, they both pick up a lot less noise from the back of the microphone than from the front of it. And most of the echoes come in from the side or the back because they bounce back from the hard surfaces of your wall, ceiling, doors and so on. When you shield which direction the noise can travel when you say it, and also shield the direction it can come back from, you remove a lot of it. Alright, so how do you make it? You need the following pieces from your local hardware store, and then I assume you have other stuff as well. I assume you have a drilling machine, a drill for concrete, a folding rule, gaffer tape, and the most important parts, a blanket. Mine is from IKEA. You need to buy the following item from the hardware store. One wall block, one eyelid 30mm length, one or two spring snaps, a closet line about 4 meters, four spring clamps, approximately 3 meters of PVC tube with a diameter of 20 millimeters with a tube thickness of 2 millimeter, and a smaller 15 to 20 millimeters tube with a diameter fitting inside the previous one. Now you need to figure out where you will be doing your recording. Since you'll be standing inside of the booth's ring, you must be able to stand in there without touching the blanket too much since this will cause noise. Depending on your physical size, you're most likely widest over your shoulders. Pick up the folding ruler and do a measurement from shoulder to shoulder. Place yourself next to a wall and let the ruler hit the wall. Get a bit of space between the wall and your shoulder and measure the distance to your other shoulder, including that same extra distance. From shoulder to shoulder I measure 70cm, but I need to breathe too, so I gave myself a 15cm on each side, 100cm. Now, back to math class. This is a circle and we need to find the perimeter of it. Simple formula, the diameter times pi. So I cut mine in about 3 meters length, put the smaller tube inside as a stabilizer and lay a gaffer tape around to see the deal. Next, find out where I wanted it to hang from. I wanted mine to be next to the table but without the blanket touching at the table. Step inside the middle of the ring, let it touch the table, look up and mark the spot right above you. Drill a hole here, insert the wall block and screw the eyelet in. Now find the spring snap we need to attach to the eyelet along with the closet line. I did a little fiddling to get a good length, but 50cm is a good distance from the spring to the PVC ring. Remember, these tend to stretch a bit and we want to minimize the noise coming in from the ceiling as well. So the closer to the ceiling, the better. Do this four times and you should have a fairly balanced ring in your spring snap. Next, attach the blanket to the ring with the four spring clamps. The chance that you have a 3 meter long blanket is rather slim, so it does not go all the way around. But now you can see the text on your screen, but if you want more, get another blanket. Attach the whatever this is to the eyelet in the ceiling and you're good to go. That's it YouTube. If you want more videos, I probably don't care, but send me a message anyway.